everyone, welcome back. So you've made it through step one, planning your growing dome greenhouse. Now for the dirty work, preparing your raised garden beds. There's plenty of things that you can do before you even begin planting to ensure a good yield. Healthy and happy plants begin with healthy and happy soil. Today, Des is going to show us how she's preparing the raised beds in our 42 foot growing dome for this coming season. Hey dome growers, I hope you're ready to grow some veggies. We already went over the best dome zone positions for your planting, but just as a general refresher, the east side gets the morning sun and afternoon shade. The south side gets the most sun exposure and heat, and the west side gets the morning shade and the afternoon sun. If you need more details on what plants to grow in these zones, check out our latest video. Hopefully you checked out our planning calendar on our website. Depending on your zone, you can start your cool season crops during January and February. And then you can start your warm season crops March through May. So figure out what you want to plant and you can start in seed trays or you can direct sow. But before you direct sow, we need to prepare our soil for maximum nutrient holding capacity. So first we're going to test the soil. You can get really technical and send a soil sample off to your local testing facility. We do recommend this if you have brand new soil or it's been three to five years since you've tested your soil. Since I'm still waiting for my soil tests to come back, we're gonna use the Rappi Test Kit that's in the Thrive Garden Kit that you can get from us. So the Thrive Garden Kit is going to come with almost everything that you need to get started. We have our seed starting tray, we have a few different types of soil amendments, we have our soil test kit, some various tools, all of this will help you be successful when you are setting up your greenhouse garden. So you can just follow the instructions on the Rappi Test Kit. It's pretty easy to use. And then I also made this cool little chart to kind of keep my samples organized, just so I can go back and track which spot I took that sample from. As your planting cycle changes, so will your nutrient needs. Since we are starting a bunch of new seedlings, we will want to focus on vegetation and growth. When you're looking at amendment labels, we want higher nitrogen, higher phosphorus, and lower potash. So that's going to be five, four, and two. Once you've figured out if you have a surplus or a deficient amount of nutrients, we can start applying amendments to the soil. One of our favorite amendments is worm castings, which we harvest from the sub pod, but you can source many different ways. The quickest and easiest way to get worm castings is simply adding organic matter and earthworms to your soil. They will feed on the matter and produce castings in the soil, which is full of nutrients. Another favorite is compost. Compost is super reliable, nutrient dense, and can be produced from so many different sources. Just make sure it's weed and pest free. There's so many amendments out there on the market, but if you are about sustainability and reliability, try to source things locally. Just remember, you'll be eating whatever you feed your plants, so just think smart. In the future, the best things to do is develop a routine that is continuously supplying the nutrients your plants need regularly. So let's talk about how to apply amendments. So make sure you calculate the square footage of your garden space so you can figure out how much amendment you need and then follow the application rate on your amendment package. So at Growing Spaces, we'll be adding both solid and liquid compost to our garden beds. The reason why I'm doing this is because I need to build the density up in the soil. Right now it's a little fluffy and it doesn't hold much moisture. So we're going to show you how to make some compost tea to feed the top dressing on your soil. No, this isn't your grandma. So let me show you how to make it. So I'm going to mix up some compost tea and I have a cool little recipe I like to follow and we're mixing for 50 gallons. I prefer brewing compost tea for established gardens, like in our other dome, with lots of organic matter to avoid turning the soil to add amendments, simply because it's easy to kill off soil life when you use mechanical devices. So turning the soil is useful if the soil is too compacted for roots to form or you lack oxygen and need to aerate. There are a lot of ways to add nutrients, and we and the rest of the Growing Dome community would love to hear from you what your favorite practice is. Some of you may even add fresh manure, but hopefully you already learned our tips on that. The last and most important step of any new or re-establishing garden is monitoring and providing adequate moisture. Just because you don't have any seedlings or plants in your soil, you should still water it. Lots of organic matter can die if you let it dry out and cook in the sun and become hydrophobic. This will dramatically increase how much water you will need to establish the soil life. So you can monitor the soil with moisture meters that measure electrical currents found in water. Low moisture means very minimal conductivity and vice versa. You can also use a soil probe which has grooves on it to pull up several different levels of soil. Then if it sticks to the probe it's pretty wet but if it instantly falls off it's dry. You can also do the good old-fashioned finger test by feeling the soil or grabbing a sample and squeezing it. 
If it crumbles really quickly, it's dry. If it squeezes out water while it sticks together, it is too wet. Different plants need different watering needs, so it's very crucial to monitor the moisture levels for the success of your plants. So mulching can be beneficial for water retention and avoiding hydrophobic conditions, but you have to be careful with it because it can't cause issues. We like to use barley straw because it's light enough to let your soil breathe and it can also act as a cover crop because it reseeds itself and adds nitrogen back to the soil. So these are just a few techniques that we practice here at Growing Spaces. We'd love to hear your preferred techniques and what zone you're doing it in so we can share with the rest of the community. Whether you're just starting off in your Growing Dome greenhouse or gearing up for a change in seasons, we hope that you learned something new about preparing your raised garden beds for planting. Make sure that you stay tuned for part three, planting your Growing Dome greenhouse. Make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notification bell because you won't want to miss that one. And you can follow us on all of our other socials linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.